So while we're waiting for the water to boil for our Japanese hot pot, also known as uh, shabu shabu, which I don't think very many mukbangers have done, except Kimi. I've watched hers. I love my Kimi. Anyways, I'm gonna open this while this is going. I have a Sahi Super Dry. I always drop the cap in every episode. So there you go. Perfect Japanese beer for our hot pot today. All right, while that's going, I'm gonna show you exactly what to do to your soup and to your sauces. The reason why I wanted to do this is because it's actually pretty easy to, to recreate at home. It's really not that complicated and it's super healthy. So I'll show you exactly what I do with my soup base here. I have, of the garlic here with a little bit of green onions and what I like to do is just put a little bit in here and just a little bit in my sauce and I'll just put the rest in here so we've got the garlic going I also like to put soy sauce you could do low sodium I just like regular soy sauce. But you don't have to put this into your soup. You could actually just keep it water based. But I like a little bit of flavor, so I'm okay with that. Alright. My favorite hot chili oil. You can find this at any Asian supermarket. I love to put a lot in my sauce as well. All right, and last but not least, some kind of sesame seasoning. And I only put that in my goma sauce here. All right, let me put this away and then we'll start eating. I'm so excited for this. All right, what should I do first? What I like to do is actually put the veggies in first because they take a little bit longer. Star shape, or flower shape, not star. And then I'm gonna put some veggies in. Some mushrooms. Let that go for a little bit. All right, so shabu shabu basically means, or it translates to, I think it's swish swish. So what you do, see this, sorry, don't be grossed out by it, but it actually, since it's so thinly sliced, it actually cooks pretty quickly. As you can see here, do a generous dip. Mmm. Mmm. That's really good. Spinach. Let's grab this one. Some salmon here. Let's do another piece.
This is so good, you guys. So all you New Year's resolutioners, take on to this recipe. If you're looking for a healthy and simple dish. I don't have tofu, but you could actually just use tofu too. Usually it's included, but I didn't get any this time. Mm. No, I lost my meat. Whatever. Hmm. Salmon is done, I think. Let's see here. So we got a piece of the salmon cooked to perfection. I love it with the ponzu. Mmm. Delicious. Let's see if the carrots are done. So all you New Year's resolutioners, I noticed the other day when I was at the gym how so many people, I mean, people that I've never seen before, decided to either join the gym for the first time ever or whatever the case, I know it's for their New Year's resolution. That's a good thing. I'm so, pe I'm so glad people are actually getting on to that. But what's interesting is that these resolutions, I don't know. I just feel like who's, I'm just thinking to myself, who's holding you accountable? I mean, you are, but really, I know what it feels like to make all these freaking, I don't know. Commitments and goals and not follow through. It's happened so many times. But health, I mean, I like it. You don't have to start on January 1st, 2017. You could start now. You can go to the gym now. Ooh. Super hot. Hmm. Hmm. Um, so it was actually brought to my attention a few weeks ago, and I never got a chance to talk about it, but If we're talking about health concerns, I really, I really think this is the best time to bring this up. I'm sure a lot of you guys heard that Jasper Days, which is another mukbanger um, that has recently just passed. 
and I wanted to give my condolences to him and his family. You know, it's it's so tragic, you know. And I was actually doing a little bit of research because I wanted to make sure that I got my facts right. And I, I may not have all the information, but I did read that he, I guess, had diabetes or he, he was struggling with it. And it, it, someone had commented how he actually didn't know that he had diabetes. So... And to not know that you have diabetes and you're eating large amounts of food on camera, I mean, that's, that sucks. Like, it's a bummer. You know, I don't, maybe you can give me some more information. I don't know. But if that is the case and if, if he did pass, Innocently because of some health complication. Um, I just, I don't know, I just feel really terrible. I was, yeah. It just makes me really sad thinking about it. And that's the thing, listen. I mean, fucking listen, like I'm not, I'm being serious right now. Maybe mukbangers haven't talked about it yet, but there is a corrupt side to mukbang, you know? I don't know if people are afraid to address it or us mukbangers are afraid to address it. But we are well aware of it as well as our viewers that... Eating large amounts of food, and most of the time it's fast food actually. I mean, mukbang is all about eating that terrible junk food. It's more entertaining that way. But anyways, I just, like the dark side of mukbang, you know? It's like, I know we eat all this food. I know every mukbanger knows that what they're doing is not exactly healthy for us, but some of us actually take responsibility and make sure that we work out and that we eat healthy on our own time. Um, and as you, and I'm sure you watch a lot, a lot of other mukbangers, some of them have gained weight, some of them have lost weight, but at the end of the day, we're eating food and lots of it, and it's going to do something to our bodies. But I'll tell you, one of my biggest fears, and I was always concerned about this actually, especially being in health education as my, you know, major in, in college, I, it's health promotion is really important. Overeating, obesity, that's, that's some serious stuff. And for me to be on camera, eat a lot of food, it's so contradictory. And I'm very much aware of that. Um, however, My biggest fear, starting mukbangs, was that I was basically afraid of promoting bad eating or, or bad eating habits, right? Making a Pizza Hut video, making a McDonald's video. Guess what happens when you guys watch those videos? You guys are driving to Pizza Hut and McDonald's and grabbing bad food because you just saw it. Now, we are all adults, I would hope, and that we all make our decisions and we can't really blame others. However, it doesn't help that you've watched me for 40 minutes eating that type of food. Of course, you're gonna want it. It's like I'm blatantly, blatantly 
putting it in your face. Yeah, that's that's something I've always thought about. I just felt I feel bad sometimes that you know when I'm eating that food I'm not really addressing that the possible health concerns that may arise from eating that type of food. I mean, I'm always thinking about putting a disclaimer before the video starts, but I don't know. Serious though. But I want you to understand too is that us mukbangers, we really do care about taking care of our bodies and our health. I mean, I, I can definitely speak for myself. Listen, there's a reason why I only post on average one video per week. If I did if I did this two times two times a week, it is not going to be good for me. I'm going to have to work even harder just to keep off that weight. Anyways, I just want to conclude that and say I really hope um, Jasper Day's, Day's family um, my best wishes, really. I just, I mean, what are you to do? I'm gonna dump this whole thing in now. On a, so back to what I was saying on a lighter note, if you're looking to be healthy, please have fun. If it's for, you know, dating purposes, finding a boyfriend, a girlfriend, do it. Because look, when you feel your best, you will attract people. You will not even realize that you will attract people. Because it's contagious. When you really like yourself, when you really love yourself, and you carry yourself a certain way, people will notice. I love those milky mushrooms. I think it's stuck in my teeth. Hold on. There you go. They're so thin. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> this just came up in my head. The other day, talking about relationships, and you, I know that you guys love hearing about relationships. Here's the thing, let me explain something to you. I am very lucky as a gay man to be able to hear, to be able to have straight men and straight women confide in me. I, I just think it's great that I get to see both sides. You know, I know a lot about dating life in the gay world and I know, now I know a lot about the dating life in uh, a man's and a woman's world because I have wonderful friends that share such great stories. Anyways, tell me if this has happened to you, but one of my girlfriends just received a direct message through Facebook from
her friend's ex-boyfriend. How's that happen to you? Or your ass has probably done it. Your ass has probably reached out to your to your friend's ex that you were interested in. You're a nasty slut. Just kidding. Have you, though? <laughs> I, <laughs> I really need to know. At first I was shocked, but let me tell you something. Have you ever... Have you ever dated someone? Maybe, you know, you're either just dating their, maybe your boyfriend or girlfriend at the moment, or you're married to them, or whatever. And you've met their friends, like you've been introduced to their group of friends. And there happens to be an attractive friend. Someone that you just find physically attractive, right? And then they eventually find them mentally and emotionally attractive as well. Has that ever happened to you? Have you ever thought to yourself, fuck, he's cute. Even though he's my boyfriend's friend, but he's cute. Or vice versa, she. I think it happens a lot. I really do. It's not that we talk about it so openly, right? It's not, we don't express that to anybody. Or we even try to, I don't know. suppress that from ourselves or for even thinking about it but it's not like you'd act on it that's why it's important for me to express these type of things to you guys on this channel. You know, I want you to know that you're not alone if you think about those things. Now, it's bad if you act on it, if you actually do something you shouldn't be doing or cheating on, you know, whomever you're dating. That's bad. But as humans, I think it's normal for us to kind of, when we meet someone new, we kind of just... Something, some spark happens, I don't know. Something that you can't help. But I just thought it was interesting how, you know, the truth comes out once, you know, once someone, a couple breaks up, and then that, that ex, boy or girl, reaches out to one of the friends. And it's stupid because, doesn't that person think like, doesn't that person ever wonder if we're gonna go back to the other, you know, our friend and tell them, hey, guess who messaged me? Your ex-boyfriend. Are you stupid? I guess he, they really don't give a shit. It's so funny, huh? But, I mean, it's bad, and it's bad if my friend actually does. Well, who says it's bad? Technically, she can date whoever she wants. Now, as far as the friendship code or rules or whatever you follow, you can't do that. You cannot date your friend's ex. That's just not okay. Technically, you can, though. But society says it's wrong. That's not me for, you know, that's not for me to decide what's right and wrong there. It depends on the situation. I should have poured this in a, a cup. Hmm. 
But anyways, I thought that was kind of weird, right? Whatever. And you know what I noticed now that I think about it? Whenever we went out, I would notice that he would always compliment this one friend, you know, that got the message. He would always compliment her, even if he was with my other friend, his current girlfriend at that time. He's just really sneaky. Really sneaky. But to each their own. Mm. Mm. So hot, so good though. Ugh. This is like hitting the spot. It's okay to have healthy food. But if this video is not popular, then I really know that you guys don't like to see healthy food. It was cold today, but it's hot now after the soup. So to kind of elaborate what I about what I said earlier about how I'm I always get great dating feedback from straight men and straight women. I'm surrounded by them constantly, you know, and they're they're always confiding in me or, or willing to tell me things that, that I find so interesting. It's it's compared to dating in the gay world, it's very different actually. And that's what I find so fascinating. I love listening to their stories and I love listening to, you know, their their everyday decisions when it comes to, to dating life and why they do the things they do, et cetera, et cetera, why they think the way they think. Um, I mean, I'll mention a few things, but it might not, I'm not gonna say this is, it's gonna encompass everyone's way of, you know, thinking or how they behave, but it's just a few examples that seem to be a common theme between both parties, actually. But, yeah. I don't know, I just, I love hearing people talk about certain things like that. I soak it in like a sponge. And I like to share it with you guys. Tell them all your, all their dirty secrets. So with straight women, you know, we always think that women are crazy, right? But I think men are a little crazy too, in their own way. But with straight w women, I ask them specific questions all the time when I'm hanging out with them. And um, especially when they talk about dating life. But women generally prefer to date men who are not, who aren't more attractive than they are. Remember, I'm not saying this for everyone. I'm just saying from what I've heard and 
from common themes, it seems to be kind of the consensus as far as as far as answers go. But yeah, they seem to always go, well, I don't want to date anyone that's more attractive than me. I want to feel, I, w I want to be the beautiful one. I personally disagree with that. I think you should be able to date whomever, even if they are better looking. What is better looking? I don't even know what better looking is. You can have an extra head on your shoulder and I still might find you hot. Like, what is the definition of attractive? I don't know. It changes every damn day. It really does. We always think that we are attracted to a specific type, but I don't think that's true. Really. And women are oftentimes really afraid of dating sites too. And if they do do it, and if they do meet someone, they kind of seem to like to be catered to without asking for it, you know? They almost kind of expect that behavior from, or that uh, kind of like respect or chivalry from another man. Open the door, pay for the dinner, I don't know. But usually, I, f I find that when the guys don't do that, girls usually tell other girls, like, hey, he didn't pay for the dinner, and the other ones would be like, are you serious? It's on the first date, I'm talking about. It seems to be a big thing. Oh, and here's another, th another thing. It's funny because most of the women I know too, they, they're they they're always dating some nice guy for a moment. And then they somehow get really, really bored. Like they almost end up trying to cause drama or something just to get, get, get the relationship kind of going in a way, you know? Put a little spark in there. I feel that they often do that a lot intentionally too and then they always end up with some guy that either doesn't pay attention to them or i don't know just not the perfect guy but yet they really like it they get upset about it but they keep coming back always coming back to the bad guy i don't know nice guys are like if I were to compare it to something, it's kind of like organic foods, healthy foods, broccoli, celery, carrots. You know you should have it, but you don't really want it. And then with the bad guys, they're like freaking Pizza Hut, Hot Cheetos. You want it real bad, but you know you shouldn't have it. <laughs> that's basically how I see it. And that seems to be a trend. Like I said, not generalizing for all women. I know that there are different people out there, so many people, but Whatever. Maybe you can relate, maybe you can't. I just think it's kind of funny though. Hmm. One of my girlfriends actually, she gave, um, she told me about a tip or something that she's learned throughout, you know, her years of going out and trying to find singles at the club or at the bar, whatever. She says that it was kind of like a social experiment that she did. She said that when she used to wear expensive handbags, and I'm talking about her Chanel bag, her YSL clutch, whatever, something expensive, she told me that she actually very rarely gets guys to approach her. 
I thought that was interesting. She says, I don't, I don't think guys, I think guys are intimidated when they see me wear, you know, an expensive anything. And I, I think it kind of makes them think that I am money hungry or something or that I'm a gold digger. So I don't get very many um, guys coming up to me. But she says that when she doesn't wear a bag at all, she just kind of has a, a small clutch with no brand, no big brand name. She gets a lot of attention from men, you know? So I thought that was really interesting. I can't say that it's true, but it sounds like it makes sense to me. Because if I was a, I guess if I was a man, you know, and I saw a woman with expensive things, I, the way I would see it is that I maybe couldn't provide that for her. Maybe that's what she likes and I couldn't give that to her because I don't really have much money. I'm still living paycheck to paycheck and I'm 30 years old. Like I'm trying to figure that shit out, but I can't provide her those nice things. Therefore, she won't be happy. Even though women, they're happy if you can share emotions. That That is enough to them. But, but I think just from not knowing each other, you know, that's their assumption. They're, they're assuming that that's what you like if you're wearing expensive expensive things like that outside. So that's why they're very cautious and they don't end up actually talking to you. And the ones that do talk to you if you wear those expensive bags are those guys that do have money but are so intense, like so, ooh, like they kind of creep you out and they, they give you the chills, right? And that's when you text your friend and be like, hey, call me, call me so I could run away from this guy. It happens way too much. I have to do that for my friends a lot. I do. Can you call me? Can you say that? Can you say that, um, you know, that I have to pick you up or something because I don't want to talk to this guy anymore. That happens a lot. Girls, you're crazy. Crazy, but I love you. Yeah, those are just a few things, but... I want to talk about the men, actually, the men that talk to me. Men, women, I just want you to know that men are very simple. They're so simple that when you get upset with them about something that they did, I'm, I can reassure you that they don't know about what they didn't do or what they did. They're, they're not aware of it. And I think that, that seems to be the most frustration that I hear about, you know, hey, I don't know why my girlfriend's so upset. I don't know what I did or didn't do. That happens a lot. I mean, that, that's where communication comes in. But I seem like, that seems to be the, the trend. They really, truly don't know what's making you mad. Like, they're, they can't read your minds, too, you know? A lot of time, a lot of the time too, the things that the girls may be mad about are, you know, on paper very irrational and petty. But men generally just suck it up and they deal with it. They go, okay, I understand, honey. You know, it's not a big deal. I'm sorry. I find that men are more willing to say I'm sorry than women. Is that not true? I don't know. Mm. Well, this is my favorite question. I always ask men too, hey, do you like it when women wear a lot of makeup? Like, are you into that? Does that look good to you? I would say most of them say no. They actually prefer you guys the way you look when you wake up in the morning. I think men are just afraid of makeup. Like they don't want to touch your face or ruin your lip gloss or whatever, kiss you and smear your li lipstick. I don't know what it is, but I feel like they can't, there is kind of like a invisible, I don't know, invisible thing that's kind of keeping them from wanting to touch you. It's not comfortable. They can't just kiss you on the cheek. I don't know. I, I just feel like that's the case because they don't want to screw up your makeup, whatever the case, but they prefer that you ha don't have it. I think you're able to be more affectionate. It seems that way at least, or at least I've heard, but they do prefer 
that you guys don't wear a lot of makeup. And when you do, it's fantastic. They love it. I think you look beautiful, actually. But not every day, and it's not necessary. You know? But, you know, women have it so hard. They are expected to wear makeup. That's just so tragic. You know, we're very lucky, men. You and I, we're lucky to not have to put on makeup like it's not even expected of us. And if we do do it, it's like, what the hell is that? It's terrible. But yes, men do prefer you all natural. And when they see you all made up, don't you see their faces? They just look at you like, damn, you're beautiful. I think men have a bad rap too, you know, about always looking at girls when they're out. Trust me, I, I have a lot of straight male friends that have girlfriends that don't come out with us. You know, they stay home while they're out with me. And what is it? I, I can reassure you that they are not looking at any girls. They're not going out of their way to talk to any other women. I know that you're constantly worried because you're not there and you can't really control any situation. You know, there, there are always drinks involved, etc, etc. But I can reassure you, they're pretty good. They're very well behaved. Contrary to, you know, popular belief. And hello, women cheat too. A lot of, a lot of people always think that it's just men cheating. Women cheat too. One of my good friends, his girlfriend just cheated on him. <sighs> Bummer, because that was her friend too. <sighs> Shit happens. Shit truly, truly does happen. Hmm. I'm almost done here. Sorry, this video is so chatty. Probably won't be popular anyway because, you know, with Shabu Shabu, you guys wanted sushi. I didn't want to do sushi, not again. All right, I think I'm good here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Just to sum everything up, don't, don't take my word for it. Don't, don't just run with my advice or whatever I'm giving you. Just kind of take it lightly, but if it, if it relates to you, I'm glad, I'm glad we can share this together because we're human at the end of the day. Love you. I'll see you guys later. For New Year's, ah, I'll see you in 2017. Bye, babes.